it was a good day. I think he was pretty happy. We come out with the um, intent to to do our best and uh, not um, have lapses, and that was good today. We sort of worked the whole way through. Um, there was a little bit of a lapse in the third quarter, but I think we're pretty happy with the win. We're a good run inside, and there was a lot of talk about um, giving the first option, and I think that's what we've done in that second quarter. We um, gave the first option, and we ran a lot more, and that's what the points came from. He's awesome. He's a cracking player, cracking leader, and great bloke. And he can do it in the back line and forward line. I love playing with him. He's awesome. Yeah, Sean's really respected. Um, this is his first year of coach in any club, and I've absolutely loved it um, with him. He sort of he spoke about a lot, but then he goes out and makes it happen himself. So he's a really good leader. He leads by example. So sort of, I'm in the back line, so I love um, Nick McCormack and Paddy O'Connell, Lockie Myers, uh, Freddie Lovell, but then there's blokes like Jack O'Kelly and heaps of different blokes, Brendy Myers, Jake Gaynor, there's blokes everywhere that are all good mates. There hasn't been a heap of talk on finals itself, but it's just been a big big emphasis on, on working harder and to get the small things right, get the lapses out of our game and just keep working on the one percenters. Yeah, look, I think Griffith and Gearman will both be two good teams to play before finals. I think they're pretty good, strong opposition, and that'll give us a good sort of hit out before finals. I'd have to say um, when we played Mangapla at Mangapla, they were really good that day. Sort of, um, I just reckon they, they almost played our style of footy better than us, and we got a lot to work on first time again. Hello, I'm Lauren Markham and that was one of Wagga Tigers' young guns, Dylan Morton, joining us on AFL Riverina TV after their big win over Coolman on the weekend. One man who saw a little of that game is AFL Riverina's operations manager, Shane Buchanan. Thanks for coming in. No worries, Lauren. Now, Shane, Tigers have set quite a standard for running footy this season. What did you make of them on Sunday? Oh, they were outstanding, there's no doubt about that. I mean, uh, their ball movement was phenomenal. Uh, they seemed to have players in position. Uh, their game structure was outstanding and cool and unfortunately were no match for them and um, the old Tigers, they're going to take some beating this year, they're well in that performance. Well, Tigers play Ganmain this weekend. It's a huge game for the Lions but they've been the centre of the season's biggest drama over the last couple of days. Tell us where things are at regarding that ugly quarter time incident at Ganmain. Yeah, as, as a time of filming now, um, uh, basically we've got all the statements in from uh, both clubs, the umpires and everyone involved on the day so the next step will be uh, going through those um, statements um, and doing an investigation and then basically dealing with uh, whatever comes out of those um, particular statements and, um, and we'll see what happens. Well, back to the footy and it's a big ask for any side to knock over Tigers at the moment and Gan Main aren't going to have the ideal preparation. Um, do they have the potential to do something special at Robbo? Well, I think they might. I mean, against Leeton, I mean, they had a really good win. I mean, the margin was quite surprising. Um, and look, you know, there's there's still a chance to play finals and whatever else. And if they get over Tigers, well, that opportunity may come. So, I mean, they've really got something to play for. Um, their season has been inconsistent um, at times. Whereas Wagga Tigers, you look at them, they've just been phenomenal in, in regards to consistency. They only dropped one game at this stage of the season. Look, I give Tyre Gamain a chance. There's no doubt about that. But I just think the uh, Tigers are Tigers. have probably got too much class for them. Well, it's a huge round of matches. It's fourth versus fifth when the Crows host Colin Gully. Second plays third at Mangapla and Coolman will be looking for some relief against Turvey in their last home game. Leeton will be under enormous pressure at home to Gully on Saturday. The drama at Gan Main overshadowed the fact that their premiership credentials are under question after a 50-point loss. Can they bounce back? Well, they've got to bounce back. I mean, if you look at Leeton in the last three years, they've been building, I suppose, maybe to this season where their recruiting has been really good. You know, they've got a new coach in and they're actually, you know, there's probably a bit of pressure on maybe internally that, you know, this, if they need to start delivering as well. But they've been inconsistent, uh, which has been the been the issue with them. And um, and Gully, well, everyone's looking over their shoulder in regards to Gully going back to last year's come fifth and then sort of get on a roll and take out the premiership. So this will be a fantastic game. Really looking forward to the to the outcome of this particular game. Look, if Leeds are going to win, they've got to be more consistent. Um, but I'm going to go with Gully. I think uh, they're the little dark horse there, just um, motoring along at the moment. And um, I think they should get over the Crows. 
Well, we also grabbed Dylan Morton's thoughts on this game. Let's have a listen. Yeah, they're sort of a dark horse near Gully. They're sort of flying through the ranks and knocking serious contenders off. And I think they're a danger team going into finals. Um, I reckon that'd be another close game. I'm going to go with, I just reckon Gully got the roll on at the moment. It's hard to beat a team when they've got heaps of momentum. And we'll have a look at the ladder as we discuss Mango versus Griffith. The Swans have a tough lead into finals. Shane, they really need a win this week if they want to avoid ending up in an elimination final. Will they? Well, it is, but I suppose Griffith, their final start this week, I suppose. They've got Manga Player, then they finish with Wagga Tigers. So uh, Griffith, a bit like Leeton, they've been inconsistent throughout the year, which is at times you know would have been annoying for their coaching staff. And they go into the biggest road trip of the year going to Mangapla as well. And if you look at Mango's form, I suppose they've been fairly consistent um, throughout the year. I mean, they've well, been more consistent than Griffith. So I'm going to go with uh, the Goannas in that particular match just for simply they're more consistent than what Griffith has been throughout the year. Well, Tigers are at home to Griffith in the final round. Let's have a listen to Dylan Morton's selection for Griffith's game against the Goannas. Yeah, I know Griffith beat Mango last time, but I just think Mango might get over the line this game. I reckon it'll be a cracking game to watch, both two solid teams, um, but I reckon Mango play in a close one. And Shane, Coolerman at home to Turvey. They've had a couple of tough Sundays recently. Can the young hoppers get something for their effort? Well, I think, yeah, it's been, a, it's been a tough year, but I suppose Turvey's had a tough year as well. And I suppose both clubs are in the same boat, I suppose. No doubt they'll be um, extensively looking to recruit more players into their club. So they need to finish off really strongly to you know, make sure that you know, they can sell something to any potential new recruits coming in. So, look, I think you know, Turvey will be competitive, but I think Coolerman, you know, they're probably uh, where their season's at. Um, probably been a little bit better form than what Turvey Park have and I should, well at home should um, you'd think get over the young Bulldogs as well. Thanks for your time Shane and enjoy your weekend of footy. Thanks Lauren. Well it wasn't just on the football field that Tigers enjoyed a big win last week. Their A grade netballers had a day out against Coolerman and are warming up nicely for finals. We'll leave you with the coach of the second place Tigers, Meg Farmer. Yeah, pleasing. I think any win at this stage is good. I think that we're building and um, playing well. We're just trying to tidy up a few errors and sort of set our own standard out there at our own pace, so working well. I think just our, our number of errors at this point in time in the season, we're trying to close that out and set our own pace and set our own standard and play our own actual game rather than um, anyone else's game, so working to our strengths and building on that. Yeah, I think, look, they're definitely the team to beat. They've started well and they're finishing well and I think any team that's undefeated throughout the season is a, a team to keep your eye on. Um, I think we'd be silly not to look at anyone that makes finals. I think you've got to forget about the round games and when you get to finals, anyone on that court that you play can potentially beat you if you don't play well. We've had a new mix. We've got a nice mix of a few older players and a few younger players. We've got a bit of new blood and a little bit of old blood there. And I just think um, working with those girls that hadn't played together at the start of the season, so just getting good combinations and having a look at what's going to work best for us and making sure that we're utilising every minute at training and, and working full 60 minutes at training and then a full 60 minutes on Saturdays. Yeah, look, I think the, the upper sort of five teams, if you turn up and you don't play well, then, you know, you, you're definitely going to be accounted for that. Um, I think they've pushed us, and I think those teams that are sort of sitting below us on the ladder are, are definitely improving. Um, so it's definitely something that we've been watching. And look, I, I honestly don't think there's anyone. I think at the end of the day in the finals, you've, you've got to have seven players out there playing at their best netball, and I think as long as they're forming good combinations in their thirds, um, that's ultimately what we're looking for.